Can I see that? Yeah, it's just what I said. Somebody, it's an emergency call from somebody at the youth center. It doesn't even say who called. Hmm. Actually, I didn't even hear the phone ring. Did she had time to say goodbye. No, oh, she probably felt guilty. You know, for not helping us clean up. No, you don't have anything to worry about, I'm sure. Who's worried? You know what? I'm just thrilled that somebody trusted Laura enough to call and ask for her by name. Mm. But I'm not too thrilled with her being alone at night. Well, most of the kids at the center are locals, right? She's yeah. probably just down the street. Listen, Ray says he's headed back to the youth center. i uh, catch up on some paperwork. I'm sure he'll know where Laura is. I'm sure she's fine, Scott. Really, I'm so proud of her. When I was Laura's age, I can promise you there's only one thing I was thinking about, and it wasn't philanthropy. Oh, that sounds like a story. If you're good, maybe I'll tell you one day. Listen, <clears throat> I think we should be very proud of her. You know, she's, she's finally found something that engages her natural talents. So. Mm-hmm. So much so that she got herself named Citizen of the Week. You don't think that was embarrassing, do you, to see her picture in the paper? Oh, I think she got a real depth charge out of it. Yeah, she did. Um, listen, I'm going to leave now, and I will call if Rafe knows anything. Okay? Okay. okay. Right. Thanks, Scott. Drive safe. Actually, I, I think Laura just now is getting a glimpse of what she's good at. And you're very proud. <laughs> Does it show? You're beaming off the ceiling. Well, what can I say? I'm hopelessly maternal. Hopeless? I would hardly say that, and definitely never describe you as maternal. Well, how would you describe me? Well, let's see. You have a very sexy brain. Curving in all the right places. Sending out bolts of electricity that light up your eyes and your voice and your smile. You're a woman who passionately to extremes, who lives abundantly in the moment. Your epitaph will read, I wanted to save the world and your friends, myself among them, will know how hard you tried. <laughs> well, uh... You have quite a way with words. Well, thank you. <laughs> but, you know, that's not really my medium. This is. You know, true beauty is not self-conscious. So don't you be. See what the lens sees. See what I see. Certain cultures believe that the camera steals their spirit. I guess that makes me a thief. Because your spirit lives in my photographs. Well, what do they say? The camera never lies? Well, you know, actually, a camera doesn't have a conscience, unlike you or me. It's actually a tool of an artist's trade. It's like a paintbrush or a chisel. And whether a photograph is true or false doesn't really matter. Because it's the artist's perception of reality. It's heightened and intensified. How do you choose your, um, your subjects? I don't always choose them. Sometimes they choose me. Look, do you remember the sunrise? the morning after our plane went down. You know, I had seen the sun come up a thousand times. But that time was different from any other in my life. I had heard people say that the world is reborn with every new day and us along with it. But I never believed it until that morning with you. I wish I'd known you before. I'm glad you know me now. There's a lot of gaps. Well, you know that I can keep my head in a crisis. <laughs> be someone who knows what it's like to survive a nightmare 
And you know like I know what it is to be thankful for one more beautiful, perfect sunrise. Because we saw it and we lived it together. We are connected. Because nobody knows what it's like to be us. It is, it always will be our special, our special bond. Hello? Hello, Brooke, it's Scott. Scott. I'll get us a refill. Scott, hi. Um, have you, did you see Laura? She isn't home yet? Well, no. Where are you? Uh, I'm at the youth center. Uh, listen, Rafe doesn't know anything about an emergency call. Because she doesn't want to be alone with me. Did the two of you have a fight? No, not even close. All right, listen, I'm, I'm going to make some calls and try and track her down. Okay. All right, you call me if you, if uh, you find her? Yeah, yeah, the same. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Hello? I beg your pardon? Mm, she is so succulent. Who is this? How did you get this number? Me, I'm a regular on the Teen Nymph website, as is the luscious Miss Lara. She would call if Laura showed up there. Now, you know kids have their own way of working things out. She's out there, and she's alone. She's going to be OK. You don't know that. Well, she's a very smart girl. She's not gonna you do barely around. know her. We just It all makes sense that she's acted out. She's held all this anger inside and all this hurt. Could she be in those pictures, 14, 15, 16 years old? Did you see her eyes? She was scared. They took her innocence and they turned it into some sick creep's fantasy. What kind of a monster could do that to an innocent young girl? <sighs> Did she think that I would love her any less because of those pictures? Yes, probably. If I had known about this, I might have kept it from blowing up. And now all those pictures are on the internet. She must feel so alone. She must feel so helpless. Who are you calling? I'm going to call the police. Derek may know something. No, not yet. Yes, all right. I want to find my daughter. We have been everywhere. The police cannot have a search for someone Laura's age for 24 hours. He might have some information. There could have been an accident. We don't know. Then you would have been notified. Brooke. If you call the police, they will want to know she took off. I'll have to tell them about the pictures. Mm-hmm. Oh. Laura doesn't need a police report that may get out to the papers. I... Exactly. Why don't you 
don't you call Rafe again down at the center. Maybe she got back. The center's the best thing that ever happened to Laura. The second best. You rate higher, Brooke. Thanks. For what? For driving me around. For keeping me sane. Oh, you have a right to go a little crazy. Oh, hi, Rafe. Listen, it's Brooke English again. I just... I... Okay. All right, well, listen, if she does, please have her call me or you call me if you hear anything, would you? Okay. What? Uh, no, that's strange. I, I wonder why. All right, listen, I, I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. No, Laura? No. He said a lot of kids didn't show up at the center today. He said for some strange reason, and it was very quiet. He said, strange. Maybe she forgot her key. Are you Laura Kirk's mother? Yes. Yeah, have you seen her? I certainly have. Where is she? Is she okay? She's supposed to help our kids at that center. Set an example for them. Is this the kind of example you raised your daughter to set? She didn't pose for those pictures willingly. She... That boy's hands are all over her. She don't look forced to me. All right, that's enough. Get out. Not till I know that girl ain't coming back to the center. I'm not beneath throwing you out, lady. Laura didn't hurt anyone but herself. We'll see now, won't we? If you were any kind of mother at all, you would understand what Ms. English is going through. These children deserve better than being looked after by trash. This isn't over, it's just the start. She's right. This is just the beginning of this. This town, this whole town is bound to find out about this. You don't know that, Brooke. This is the only home that Laura has ever known in her life. I mean, it, when we find her, how am I ever going to convince her to come, come back? <laughs>